even when the other person is yelling, not back. Okay, thank you. Just do the minimum, see if he can do it. And then if someone has improved a lot, then he can do better. Then he can, uh, the assignment will, can go to the next step. So here today, we'll talk about the steps of counseling. First is building up the trusting relationship to let him trust us, to say words, to speak gently to the person, to, uh, to accept him, even though he has done something wrong, still accept him. Like the woman caught in adultery, Jesus did not yell at him, at her. That Jesus did, uh, gave her a way out and then comfort her and say, neither do I uh, condemn you. Go and sin no more. Okay, and then listening. And this is a very hard part, listening. Uh, when the person says uh, in a few page down here, so if it says, oh, I feel unhappy, then we'll say, oh, I heard that you say you're unhappy. I, I'm sorry for that. Tell me more about it and uh, how you're feeling now. So we want to think about the feelings. So my assignment for you is that you listen to your spouse, to your children, to your fam uh, family members, to your church members. Listen to them and then find out their feelings. What are some possible feelings? Um, if a person has not done so well in ministry, uh, like your co-worker, the choir members, they not, have not done so well, then uh, you can listen to them and, uh, and just and talk to them and respond to the, to the feelings. They, you ask them, uh, what has happened? I noticed that you're unhappy today. Is, did anything happen? And then uh, the person says, well, my family member yelled at me or I did not sing very well. And then we'll say, oh, I heard that you didn't feel happy because you did not sing so well today or because someone yelled at you, I'm sorry to hear that. It must be difficult for you. Uh, how do you feel right now? So ask, find out more about the feelings and respond to the feelings. I know it's difficult. I know um, it's affecting you. And we give them hope, you know, and feel, uh, we empathize with them. I know it's hard when someone yells at you. It's difficult. It makes you feel unhappy. And, uh, and God cares about you, and I care about you. So this is the comforting part. God cares about you, and I care about you. And I, 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 I believe that you can be healed. You can be joyful again. You can have the joy of the Lord. So we can give them hope. So listening and responding to give them hope. And then guide the counselee to express uh, when he has talked about his feelings and we can uh, ask him how do you feel or repeat what he has said or rephrase what he has said to say that, oh, someone said this to you so you feel very unhappy. And then uh, accept the feeling instead of analyzing it uh, so it's natural for you to feel sad now. It's natural for you to feel unhappy now. You, so we accept that feeling. And then we have empathy. The primary empathy is em empathizing with his feeling that he has expressed, that he's angry now, he's unhappy now, he's sad now. Advanced level is saying what happened has affected something deeper. For instance, it has made you feel like a... Uh, unsuccessful preacher that you think that you are unsuccessful in your ministry and you feel unhappy about it so it has affected you and then also maybe it has affected your belief in yourself that you think that you're not a good husband and or good wife that you n have not been doing well in your marriage so it makes you feel bad about yourself so it's the how it affects the person to let the person uh, ask him is this is true does it affect your feeling about yourselves and then if he does then we say oh i'm sorry to hear that it affects your self-image to make you feel you are you're a failure that it's uh, that you you feel that uh, uh, you feel uh, desperate or uh, hopeless that you feel it's uh, disencouraging discouraging and then uh, so we accept the feeling and then support uh, 
and we support by saying, "Oh, it's natural to feel like this," and uh, and uh, I know it's difficult, and uh, but I see that you have the motivation to change, and you can improve. God can help you. Okay, and then guide the counsel counselor to analyze the situation and the problem. So, uh, so what's happening now? What is happening to him? To you? To your emotions? What is happening now? How is it affecting you? And what are the root problems? And then guide number six, guide the counselor to imagine the best scenario for the future. So can you imagine that if you he improves or you improve, so what will happen in the future if that happens? So we can guide the person to to uh, imagine the best scenario uh, uh, if you restore your marriage is restored to like when you were dating. So how would it be? And then kind of constantly to think of ways to work on the problem. So what are possible ways to work on your feeling, your emotions, and work on how you respond to him, how you relate to him, how you appreciate him, and how you are not affected by him. How can you do it? And then, uh, and then start to change. So can you start to do it tonight? Can you start to do it when you go home? And then you start to do it these few days. Is it possible? So we'll pray for strength that you will start to do it. Uh, and then follow up next time. Set a time. The next time we'll follow up and see uh, how you're doing. And then if you're improving, that's great. And then you keep improving. And then what, and what, there are some new assignments. If he, he's not changing, so what are the reasons and how can we change? So these are what we have gone through the, the steps the steps of um, counseling. Okay. These questions will help us internalize the content and also uh, it, these questions are basically the question you ask uh, when you do the assignments and I'm just doing it for you now. So if you remember the answer you can just put it down. That's it. So it's just helping you to know uh, uh, how to internalize what we have learned okay so about counseling how to do counseling first question here how did God counsel Jonah to change so Jonah uh, you know went back to Nineveh and he was very angry because God did not punish them and then God arranged the worm to come uh, no the plan first the plan to shade him and he feels very happy and then a worm to eat to kill the plant and then the plant died and then he was in the sun and suffering and then he was very angry and God asked him is it right for you to be angry and he said it's right for me to angry even anger unto death and then God said well you you did not plant the seed you not, did not cause the plant to grow and you're so unhappy about it and God did not say it. Actually, you're unhappy because of your suffering. But think of all these people, so many people there in Nineveh. Do you care about them? Can I not have compassion on them? Now, Jonah must have been changed by God. And so he wrote that down, what God said to him. So God guided him step by step to rethink his own motives, what he cared about. He cares about himself most. And then number two, how does the Holy Spirit and Jesus counsel us and guide us to change? Do they accuse us or command us to change? How does the Holy Spirit and Jesus make, make you feel when they counsel you? Can you compare that with how you treat your spouse and children? So how does the Holy Spirit and Jesus counsel us? The Holy Spirit comes in a very gentle way to move our heart, to touch our heart to move us to change the Holy Spirit is very gentle he doesn't just accuse he accepts us first and guide us to change so do we change like do we try to guide people to change like the Holy Spirit very often no very often people yell at the children or the spouse instead of accepting them and guiding them so we need to learn from the Holy Spirit if we think of how the Holy Spirit counsel us, then we counsel other people, like learning from the Holy Spirit, how to counsel people. So three, what is counseling useful? 
useful for? Counseling is useful for helping people with the problem, helping marriages, helping church workers uh, to handle the problems, how to raise up people to serve God, how to raise up people's spiritual life, uh, how to uh, build up the relationship of the co-workers in a church. So all of these are useful whenever, whenever people are not easily willing to change. When they are willing to change, we can teach, but they are not willing to change. Uh, or there's something, some problem inside blocking to change. Then we can uh, guide them with counseling. And then if we learn this skill, it will be very useful for us when we are teaching and, and preaching. Okay, And then uh, question number four, so uh, what are the differences between teaching and counseling? Teaching is basically telling people what to do and it's use, useful for uh, people who are willing to learn. Someone says, I want to learn how to pray for people. He's already willing. I want to learn how to speak gently to my wife. He's already ready. And then counseling is usually helpful for people who are not motivated to change. And also, the situation is so difficult, it's hard for him to change. He doesn't know how to take the steps. So we want to guide him how to change. And then if a couple is fighting, should we use teaching or counseling? Now for sure it's counseling because he's fighting, you tell him stop fighting and, and uh, forgive each other and pray for each other, they won't do it because they are in, uh, in negative emotions, they are in anger. When people are in anger or depression, it's very hard to reason with them. So we maybe we'll pray with them first and then we gradually guide them to change. Okay, and then number five, explain the health of a whole person in this area, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, interpersonal relationship, environment, group, meaning and purpose of life. So these are areas of people's health. Um, spiritual means his relationship with God. Is it healthy? Because from God we can have more joy and strength and motivation and have a, a holy life, a clean life. Physical. If people are tired all the time, he cannot sleep, he cannot go to bed, he, cannot, he doesn't eat right, then he will for sure have different kinds of problems. Because then he will be very emotional and he will have all kinds of problems. So people need to be counseled to take care of the physical health and the mental and emotional health. Now some people are always negative. They say, I'm useless, I'm, uh, whatever I do, people don't like it, nobody likes me. So they have the thinking. Now this thinking came from the past that in the past people has treated him badly. But sometimes it be because he has treated other people badly. Because he came from a family of yelling. So he yelled at people, he gets angry at people. So all this history affects him. It stays in his heart. So he needs to uh, learn ways how to handle his negative emotions, his thinking, how to think positively and healthily. An interpersonal relationship. Some people cannot relate to people. They just yell at people or they just uh, show an angry face, uh, a frustrated face to, at, uh, at people, to people. So they have problem relating to people and communicating with people. If with the environment, now if we have unity with the environment, we would like the trees and the rivers and the sky, the stars, and then they will feel peaceful. They will feel peaceful in nature. If a person is unhappy, he will not feel peaceful when we see all the beautiful things in nature. And we want to learn to appreciate the na nature, environment. And group health, health, it's like in a church, in a family, uh, in a working situation, can he relate to the people? So we need to learn to how to relate to people in a group. And meaning and uh, purpose of life, that's his meaning of life and, and purpose, a reason to live. Everyone has a reason to live for God. God can use any person. So if he is willing to change and let God guide him, his life will go higher and higher. If he improves a little bit, he can applaud himself and he can thank God I'm changing, thank God I'm changing, and he, he can be happy. Okay, and then explain a person's health depends on 
his external and internal lifestyle support system, ability to handle difficult situations. That first is his external lifestyle, like how he eat, how he sleep, how he talk to people, how he uh, uh, use the cell phone, all this external, externally. And internal lifestyle, is he always think about negative things? Is he always complaining? Is he always uh, uh, unhappy? So if he's ha having a negative internal lifestyle, he has to change. An external lifestyle too has to change. If he's always sleeping very late, he has to change. If he's always yelling at people, he has to change. And then his support system. We all need support system. We need the support system from God, but we also need the support system from people because we are people. We relate to people. If a person has zero friend, no friend at all, no friend on earth, he never care about people, he never has a friend, he will have many, many problems. We need to be able to relate to people. So we need the support system. The support system can be, you know, that they accept us, they encourage us, they uh, overcome our problems with us. So we need to build up the support system. But some people, uh, they're suffering because the family has problems. Then they need to build up external, outside of the family, some friends to support him some Christians in the church to support him. And then ability to handle difficult situation. Now some people when they have a problem, they just go cry and they sleep or they run away. They, they, they do all kinds of uh, irrational things. But if we learn to handle problems, even if we have lost a lot of money, what can we do? If we just cry, the money is not going to come back. We have to handle it step by step. So these are ways these are three things we need to learn. Now, these are things we need to help people with if they have this problem. And we can put this in our preaching also. This can be put in our preaching. And there are many Bible verses related to this because the Bible does talk about <clears throat> all this, you know, like mental, emotional. The Bible talks about, you know, uh, be thankful to the Lord, count the blessings of God, and, and be happy, be joyful in the Lord. Uh, interpersonal relationship, the, talk, the Bible talks about love each other, care about each other, do to the little ones. So all this the Bible talks about. And environment, the Bible talks about praising God for an environment. And then uh, external lifestyle, that we take good care of our body, the Bible talks about that too, in internal lifestyle. The, feeling and emotions and support system. <clears throat> now the psalmist <clears throat> sometimes they're attacked by people but they also have friends to support them. David has been attacked by people but he has his followers, the friends to support him. And then <clears throat> and David learned to handle different uh, difficult situation when he was attacked by Saul so he learned how to handle the situations. Okay, number seven, explain the ability of a person as social being, to be alone and to be intimate with people. So each person has to learn to be alone. As a Christian, we need to learn to be able to pray alone, to read the Bible alone, to handle our problems alone. So these are important, even though it came from the uh, you know, the psych uh, psychology. But the Bible does have these ideas too. The Bible does have these ideas. So, so we learn to be alone, uh, to wait on the Lord. The Bible talks about to wait on the Lord. And then, uh, and then to be intimate with people that, uh, that uh, the Bible talks about how to have unity with the church, with people, to love uh, the wife, and the wife submit to the, to the husband, and uh, how to love the children. So the Bible talks about uh, intimacy with people. And then number eight, explain the ability of a person to have motivation to action, creativity, and ability to commit. 
So we all need to have the motivation to action. And the Bible talks about that the love of God compels me, that Paul was so motivated to preach the gospel unto death, that he's not afraid of death. That motivation came from God and his view of himself, that he was chosen by God, he was used by God, and we all are chosen by God. Creativity doesn't necessarily mean you can draw pictures. You know, when you have you've lost some money, you have to think of ways how to solve the problem. So you either forget about it or you get some money from the bank or uh, get help from someone. So think of some ways to solve a problem. If you have a problem with the person, you have to think of how to relate to him. This is creativity, to think of ways to solve a problem. Then ability to commit, that when we commit to Jesus Christ, we want to follow Jesus and commit to a church and be faithful to the church, commit to ministry that we can commit and and uh, really do our best. Some people cannot commit. They can never keep a job for a long, f for a longer time, and they cannot commit to serving God. They cannot commit to a church. So these are uh, some problems. Some people they cannot commit to different actions. Why is it important to build up the self worth of a person? How do we do that? Uh, and how is our self-worth built up with our relationship with God and with and with how we build up our lives okay so why is it important to build up our self-worth the self-worth make us realize that we are important that is worthy to work on our lives to raise up our life to be used by God and in the Bible there are many places that talk about that we are worthy in in God that we are that we can do great things like Paul, Peter said to Jesus leave me because I'm a sinner and then um, Jesus said to him do not be afraid you'll become a catcher of men so Jesus give him hope you are you will be a powerful person to bless many people don't worry about your sins I'll forgive you I'll give you strength you have uh, you you have self-worth so we all need to build up the self-worth. This is not pride. This is believing that we are important. And how do we do that? We do that by believing in God first, that we are important. We build up the relationship with God so we have more joy. But we also build up the self-worth with achievements. What I mean is like this. If a person always fails in everything, if he fails in his relationship with people he will not have healthy self-worth he need to work on how to forgive people how to relate to people how to talk to people gently care about people and restore relationship and forgive so he need to learn this and then when he successfully build up some relationship then he will feel oh i can do it then he realized that he has self-worth so the self-worth first came from god Build up the relationship with God and trusting in God's how God treasure us. And then from our growth in the Lord and in growth in every area, in relating to people, in solving problems, in uh, learning the Bible, in uh, experiencing, experiencing the Holy Spirit. It also builds up the self-worth that I can experience God. God can come to me. It's a gift of God. And I've learned this way of opening my heart. Thank you, Lord, for the gift. And, that, and then we, we've, we know that we can go deeper in God because I have been able to build up this relationship with God. So self-worth is not just built up with praying and believing in the Bible. Also built up with building up our abilities in every area of our life. Building up the ability in every area of our life. Okay, and then, but then now, it's different from the world. From the world, it's like this. Some people say, I, gain, I earn a lot of money, so I feel good. No, that's different. But what we're saying is, we can work. We have the ability to work. I have the ability to overcome difficulties. I can have the ability to work in difficult, difficult situations to overcome the problems. So that's building up the ability instead of just earning money. Some people don't have a lot of money, but they have healthy self-worth. Uh, how is our self 
worth build up with our relationship with God and with how we build up our life. So I just now I talk about the two areas. First is the relationship with God and how we build up our lives in our ability to relate to people, ability to handle negative emotions and difficult situations and uh, reading the Bible and building up our relationship with God, the ability in all this area. Okay, number 10, why is it important that we can accept our emotional experiences instead of suppressing it or ignoring it? Now, emotions are real responses from created by God. The point is, we don't let it stay forever. It's a warning. For instance, um, someone just hurt us. We would have anger. That is a natural response God put in us. But we don't let the anger stay. We'll say, okay, uh, he did it accidentally or he did it intentionally. But he's always like that. He wants to hurt people. So I <clears throat> handle that in my heart that I don't have to be affected by him. I can have compassion on him because he has been hurt by other people. So he has a tendency to want to yell at people or hurt people. So I don't have to take it seriously. Then we handle the negative emotions so I'm not staying in anger all the time. So anything happened, we will have immediately, we have an emotional response, but we want to handle that so that we can manage the emotions. And suppressing the emotion, what happened is the person, person has fear, but he doesn't take care of that. He just, I don't have, they just, uh, uh, just don't face it and don't think of the fear. And then, but then next time the fear come again and then he, he feels f fearful, but then he doesn't handle it. To handle it means to say, I don't have to be afraid of him or afraid of darkness or afraid of death or afraid of demons. I don't have to be afraid of all this because God is powerful and I have the, uh, the power from God to overcome all these difficulties. So I don't have to be afraid and I can be courageous. So that's handling the feeling instead of suppressing. Some people are very sad. They, but they hide the feeling, suppress the feeling. They ignore it. They say, I don't have it. I don't have it. And then what happened is uh, it was stored inside him and one day it would blow up. There are people who store up a lot of negative feelings. They are angry with people, but they don't handle it. And, but they, when they talk to people, they, they are full of anger. But they don't take away the anger. So it's all stored up in him and he doesn't accept it. He just ignored it, and then he didn't know that he's affected by the anger. When we don't handle the emotions, it will stay in our life and it will affect us. But if we take care of it, it will go away. Okay, and then number 11, why is it important that a person can experience joy and pleasure? Now this is a healthy person. The Bible talks about rejoice in the Lord, the ability to rejoice. And there are some people who lose the ability to rejoice because they have, uh, have had so many sad experiences. They're always unhappy and they suppress all the unhappy feelings that go deep in them. And gradually they don't know how to laugh or smile. They cannot be happy anymore. Now, if you are like that, maybe you can start to laugh. Now, don't just laugh anywhere, but go to a place no, nobody is there. Or people accept you and then you say, well, we laugh together because of God. God is so good. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Gradually, he can, he can be more happy. And also, count the blessings, all the, all the good things. And enjoy what God has given him. And enjoy what people has given him to help him. And enjoy that. Thank the friends. Enjoy the friendship. So that way, uh, he will have more joy. The ability to have joy is important. Some people cannot laugh. Some people, when they grow up gradually, they always tense, always under pressure, never smile. Number 12, what are the purposes of counseling as related to God? People, thinking, emotions, physical activity, and group. So uh, counseling is to help people to build up the relationship with God, how to build up the healthy relationship so that we, we can grow spiritually and relate to people so that we can accept them, we can be kind to them, we can be nice to them, and then our thinking, that we will think positively. We can think of ourselves positively. Yes, I have the uh, room for growth. I will grow more and more. I will be more happy. I can bless more people. 
and in emotions that they can be joyful and peaceful and handle the negative emotions and physical uh, that they can uh, that they are strong they are healthy physically uh, that they have good sleep and then activities that they can participate in activities uh, they can participate uh, in a church activity in a family activities uh, in any activity uh, with people and then group in a group in a church in a family in a uh, workplace uh, with the neighbors so we want to help people in all these areas to be healthy okay so we'll stop here now and God bless you and I pray that God will God will uh, guide you and use you and if you have questions you can send to me please do the homework so that you can learn it's not just listening it, it won't change it this is a very difficult content because it's not just helping ourselves, it's helping people. So first we counsel ourselves, that we help ourselves. And then we start to counsel people. So we need to examine all these areas of the life. All the areas of the life. And then how can we restore these areas uh, to a healthy condition. And then we you know in every area we we are joyful peaceful we can handle personal relationship we can handle difficult situations we have purpose in life we have all this and then you know of course it all built on the relationship with god and then the person the whole person is healthy so that's the goal of counseling let's pray dear lord jesus help us to have the motivation to learn to understand that when god talks to jonah God doesn't just tell him what to do. God guide him to realize his problem of just concentrating on himself, on his own needs and suffering, instead of thinking about so many people in Nineveh. And also how the Holy Spirit counsel us. The Holy Spirit will guide us in a gentle way. The Holy Spirit will accept us so that we feel accepted and peaceful. Thank you, Lord. You counsel us all the time with the Holy Spirit. Help us to relate to people like the Holy Spirit relate to us, that we can talk to people gently, guide them to think of the goodness of God and think of how the life can go better and better and how we can handle different problems and uh, how to communicate with each other. Thank you, Lord. You have given us great wisdom from the Bible and also, also wisdom to psychologists who understand these principles that also uh, the Bible talks about that will help us to have a complete health of our whole person. Thank you, Lord. Give us health and give us joy that we can rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah! We can rejoice in you. We can relax in you. We can enjoy life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, is there any question here? If you have any question, you can ask right away. Now, it could might be time to stop now, but then if you have any question, I can still answer. Any question? Um, okay, no question then. God bless you. Okay, next week, um, should be Wednesday again. Next week will be 19. So communicate with me and uh, and also doing the homework. That's very important. Do the homework and communicate with me about any questions and uh, difficulty in doing the assignments. Let me know. Okay. God bless you. God be with you all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.